Advertising in many different forms has been around since ancient times, but in June of 1836, a newspaper in France called La Presse included a paid advertisement in its pages for the first time. By doing so, they were able to lower the price of the newspaper, extend their readership further, increase their profits, and it created a formula that advertisers would try to replicate for years after. As more products flooded the market and still continue to do so this day, advertisers have had to think way outside the box in order to sell their product and have found unexpected and secretive ways of doing so. Let's find out as we look at the top 10 secrets advertisers do not want you to know. Number 10. Dropping the dollar sign When looking at the price of a product you want to buy, do you ever think about the presence or absence of a dollar sign? Advertisers certainly hope you're realizing it on a subconscious level, because according to a Cornell University study, removing a dollar sign can actually make it easier for a consumer to buy something at a higher price. The study showed that when removing the dollar sign or currency symbol in front of a menu item, a restaurant was far more likely to sell that item. Similarly, advertisers will manipulate the price of the product to make it seem cheaper. While you may not want to buy something for $5, the same product sold at $4.99 somehow seems more appealing. Through simple gestures like taking a penny off of a product or dropping a dollar sign, advertisers have made much more profit than they would have otherwise gained. Number 9. Trustworthy Faces Do you ever wonder why certain people are in commercials and others are not? Well, it's certainly not left up to chance, since advertisers use a complicated algorithm to determine how trustworthy a face looks. It's believed that our first impressions concerning a person's trustworthiness happens between 10 and 33 milliseconds of seeing a face. A study from NYU shows that when people are considering trustworthiness, the most important facial aspects they subconsciously consider are proportions, higher cheekbones, eyebrows, and a genuine smile that uses all the facial muscles. Combine these facial cues with a celebrity to endorse it, and a product will fly off the shelves. Number 8. Misleading Commercials While it may not be considered boldface lying, a lot of advertisements contain very misleading visuals. The largest example of this comes from car commercials. You know, the beautiful sleek cars that are driving across a desert or down a street at a high speed, and the cars just look so unbelievably good, but you shouldn't believe it since the car you're looking at is most likely created by a computer. That's right, most car commercials digitally add in their cars later, while they film commercials with bare-bone vehicles that are easy to digitally replace later. It allows the advertisers to make the car look its absolute best with no bugs splattered on the window or dirty spots on the car. This method also allows advertisers to create an entire ad campaign before the car is technically even ready to sell. This type of manipulation could stretch into nearly every inch of a commercial, even to that shot of a beautiful butterfly on a flower in the detergent commercial. They must have been so lucky to get that shot, right? Wrong. The poor butterfly was placed in the fridge to calm him down so he could slowly wake up while they filmed him. Number 7. Anchoring an Item Besides dropping a penny off of a product, there are many other ways advertisers manipulate the price of a product. One method involves anchoring a product to a higher price just so they can further mark it down later. While you may be looking to spend $40 on a shirt, you notice the shirt next to it is normally $100 but has been marked down to $50. Suddenly, you are blinded by the amazing deal you're getting and end up spending an extra $10, just like the advertisers wanted. Another way prices are manipulated is by adding a higher priced item that is not a good deal in order to make another item seem like an amazing deal. This is often used in electronics when there are two products close in price with similar features. Consumers may not be sure which product to buy, so the advertiser adds an inferior product at a higher price, which makes the first two products sell more. Number 6. Social Proof Many of our life experiences are filtered through the reactions of the people around us. This often extends to the products we own and the products that others around us own. Psychologists and marketing agencies refer to this aspect of humans as social proof. In the simplest way, it is used in the slogans like 9 out of 10 people like our sandwich better and 4 out of 5 dentists approve. We're being told that many others like these products or services. Do we want to be the one that does not? As advertising has evolved, so have the methods with which social proof is used. 
Thanks to social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, many brands use influencers to push their products via social media. Advertisers want you to think, if that reality star that you follow uses a special detox tea, maybe I should as well. Believe it or not, this method works so well that many people now make a living just by constantly growing their amount of followers and consistently posting paid advertisements to their millions of followers. Number 5. Limited Edition and Collectors The majority of products don't need to worry about supply and demand, since most products are produced at such high levels that companies just want to sell as much as possible. However, the concept of a limited production of an item is sometimes a trick advertisers use to make a consumer want the item even more. When consumers hear that a product is a collector's item or a limited edition, the subtext that advertisers want you to have in your brain is that this item will increase in price later. It plays on the notion that with less supply, demand will increase, therefore the price will increase when people want to buy it later, but they can't. The actuality of this occurring is so rare, but like play in the lottery, many people are drawn to it without realizing. On a smaller scale, many websites use this method by showing a number of how many are left of a product at a specific price. And can you believe it? Most of the time, there are only one or two left. And then there's a timer counting down to when this price will expire, and a pop-up lets you know that there are three other people looking at this exact deal. And before you know it, you succumb to the pressure and you buy it. Airplane tickets, hotel rooms, and vacation packages are just some of the many items sold in this high pressure and limited amount advertising style. Number 4. Nostalgia and Smells When it comes to advertisers, some tricks are just slight manipulations, but the way they feed on our nostalgia is almost psychological warfare. Advertisers look to take every aspect of the shopping experience to encourage you to spend more. When strolling through the mall, the music you hear is often a song from a few decades ago or highlighting a holiday such as Christmas. While this may seem like nice ambience, it's designed to evoke your memories and nostalgia, which is linked to actually spending more. Nostalgia brings on a sense of interconnectedness among people as their brain is tied to happy memories in the past. This often makes us value our connections to others more and devalues our connection to something less meaningful like money. Our brains want us to take care of the people in our life, and since you're in the mall, that usually means buying gifts for loved ones. In addition, our sense of smell is often tied to happy memories in the past, which is something advertisers look to take advantage of as well. When you look at the layout of a mall or supermarket, there are flower kiosks, perfume counters, or bakeries that are placed close to the door, so that way consumers can get a whip and are involuntarily put in a better mood and they're more likely to spend. Some stores have gone so far as to pump artificial scents in the air with startlingly positive results. Number 3. Manipulation of Terms Sometimes in order to sell a product, advertisers need to fudge the facts about that product or at least present them in a smart way. Advertisers have to focus on the design of a package and its ability to lead your eyes away from the revealing information that they don't want you to see. A prime example is Pringles. Everybody knows them and their marketing and packaging is very consistent and memorable due to their potato chips not being served in a bag. However, if you can get past the fun logo and bright colors, you would see that Pringles are actually only 42% potato. Also, when you look at packaging for single slices of cheese, you're often distracted by the benefits, such as high calcium content written in a fashion to disguise the fact that what you're eating is actually a cheese product, not technically cheese, as it's less than 51% real cheese. Products like these often have their terms manipulated and placed far away from a brand's logo or what they want you to think the product is. Look for the tiny writing tucked away in a corner to see what you're really eating. Number 2. Sell twice as much Even after advertisers have done their job of getting you to buy their product, they are not done with you yet. Now they want you to buy even more of it. So how do they do it? Advertisers use cues in their commercials to constantly trick you into using even more of a product. Gum commercials show a person taking two pieces of gum instead of one, and often show a person offering gum to someone else as a meaningful social interaction, therefore influencing you to consume and share more than you would otherwise. 
Another example, laundry detergents have started selling concentrated versions of their products and put very subtle markers on the cap to show you that you don't need to use as much as you normally would. However, commercials tend to show a happy, smiling person dumping tons of detergent into the washer without measuring it, which leads many people to do exactly the same thing. Even shampoo bottles would recommend you use their product twice to get the best results. But as most people know, that's not necessary. Advertisers will also work to create a legend around their products that can help increase sales even if it is not true. However, if it is true, that's even better. Case in point, the craze of dropping Mentos in Diet Coke that became an absolute legend online. Millions of people heard this legend and had to see if it was true, thus spending millions of dollars on unneeded soda and candy. Number 1. Food Photos Commercials for food products and restaurants dominate most TV commercial breaks and print advertising. The food always looks so amazingly delicious that you can feel your mouth watering. Too bad food commercials are the ways that advertisers trick us the most. With the conditions of shooting a commercial, it's often impossible to make food look as it should, so tricks have been used for years to make a product look better. You know those delicious pancakes with maple syrup thickly coating it as it's poured? Well, the reason it coats so well is because it is motor oil. And that beautiful coat of pancakes? Well, that is possible when you put a layer of varnish on the pancakes, so they don't absorb what is being poured on them. What about ice cream? Try scoops of mashed potatoes instead. What about a nicely grilled piece of meat? Those amazing char marks are actually shoe polish. Ever wonder what makes fruit and vegetables shine so gorgeously? Unfortunately, it is spray deodorant. And what about a nice bowl of cereal? Surely there's nothing strange about that. Wrong. Photographers usually squeeze a load of PVA glue into a bowl and use that instead of milk. It stops the cereal from sinking and allows it to look nicely perched on top of the fake milk. So, that delicious cereal artwork is not as milky as you thought. There's literally not a single image of food in a commercial that you should believe. However, it doesn't stop our mouths from salivating when we see something that looks delicious. This old trick is something advertisers will continue to use for years to come. Are there any ways advertisers have duped you that didn't make the list? Are there any products that you're sworn off now that you know how they tricked you? Let me know in the comments section down below. See you next time.